From the Spartan War to the landings in Normandy, amphibious offensives have proven extremely dangerous, as there's no other time soldiers are more vulnerable than when they're transitioning from water to land. The US Navy is looking to solve that vulnerability by developing a massive amphibious tank built to deliver soldiers and combat vehicles from ships to land safely and effectively. The project's name is Ultra Heavy Lift Amphibious Connector, or UHAC, and it's the first vehicle of its kind. With the ability to carry three full-size tanks and several troops, the UHAC has the potential of changing war tactics forever. At first glance, the tank looks similar to other tracked vehicles. However, upon closer inspection, its crawler belts are fitted with specialized dense foam wedges to allow it to float on water and tread on land. The project so far has resulted in an impressive prototype designed at a one-fifth scale, which can be seen on this rare footage taken during a recent demonstration as it steadily approaches to perform a landing for the first time ever. Difficult landings. Amphibious warfare is a double-edged sword. On the one hand, it provides unparalleled mobility and flexibility to the attackers, especially when invading islands and archipelago territories. But on the other hand, the assailant becomes highly vulnerable during the water-to-land transition and must start from nothing to build up strength to ground. In the past, amphibious operations would require the construction of makeshift docks to allow the unloading of troops and equipment. Later, during World War I and World War II, the Allies developed landing ships to use during such assaults. The landing ship was revolutionary, as it completely eliminated the need for piers or docks and allowed troops and equipment to deploy directly on a beach. Unfortunately, the vessels required a specific type of environment with a well-defined ascending slope where the landing ships would not get stranded or crash with any rocks. In addition, landing ships could not go any further than the shore, which meant that once they dropped the main door, all the troops and equipment that landed on the beach were entirely exposed to enemy assaults. Such a disadvantage was clearly showcased during the Normandy landing on D-Day. During the 1950s and 1960s, other methods of transitioning from water to land were developed. The use of cargo planes and helicopters permitted the swift deployment of troops and even some smaller vehicles. However, aircraft use was limited to a few troops positioned by a helicopter, as any larger load required a runway or parachuting gear. Here is where the need for a more effective landing solution arose. The Ultra Heavy Lift Amphibious Connector would not only make it much more straightforward to land troops, equipment, and vehicles, as it doesn't have to stop at the shoreline, but it would also allow landings over rocky beaches and seawalls up to 10 feet tall and to traverse over many natural or man-made obstacles. An experimental vehicle. Designed to overcome all the obstacles presented by conventional landing vehicles, the UHAC is expected to completely revolutionize amphibious warfare. Even now, when the vehicle is still in its early development phase, the prototype presented showed remarkable potential. The floaters adapted to the crawler belts provide ample buoyancy for the vehicle to support an extraordinary weight. And despite being half the size of the intended final product, the prototype can move over water at a higher speed than some other landing vessels and easily carry military vehicles. At the moment, the vehicle is not fitted with armor plates or mounted weapons. Still, the design includes plans to add medium armor and armament systems, acquisitions that would provide landing troops with unprecedented protection, and the ability to issue covering fire from the vehicle's location to dissuade enemy attacks even further. The current prototype model weighs 38 tons and is just under 18 feet tall, meaning that a full-scale vehicle would weigh up to 80 tons and tower over a three-story building. The final UHAC would be able to carry up to three main battle tanks at speeds of up to 20 knots, with a range of over 200 miles. Once on land, the UHAC would be able to advance over 10-foot obstacles and through swampland or mud and other challenging terrains. Initially, the amphibious connector was designed by Navitech, a world-class military contractor, and the plan was financed and developed by the Office of Naval Research. Currently, the project is undergoing a testing phase led by the Marine Corps Warfighting Laboratory. Lieutenant Colonel Don Gordon, the current technology officer at the Marine Corps Warfighting Laboratory, expressed that, quote, the ultra-heavy lift amphibious connector 
is an experimental technology that could soon insert marines in areas where current technology wouldn't be able to insert them. Not only does the UHAC have unprecedented delivery capabilities, but it's also estimated to offer remarkable efficiency, as calculations predict that it would cost less than half as much to build and maintain than a landing craft air cushion unit. Even when the landing craft air cushion unit has a faster water speed of 30 knots, in contrast to the 20 knots projected for the amphibious tank, and a smaller area of 1,800 square feet compared to 2,500 square feet from the novel prototype, the trade-off is well worth it if it means being able to insert marines in previously unreachable terrains while doing it at a much cheaper cost. Test footage. On July 9th, 2014, U.S. Marines and experts from the Marine Corps Warfighting Laboratory conducted a demonstration during which a fully functional half-scale prototype of its new UHAC amphibious transport vehicle performed a test landing at the Marine Corps training area Bellows in Oahu, Hawaii to deliver a military vehicle ashore. In the rare footage captured by the MCWL, the amphibious vehicle can be seen approaching the beach, slowly traversing the water using its crawler belts as a tank moving on land instead of water. Due to the current limitations of the prototype and the safety requirements needed to conduct the trial, the vehicle is seen moving at a speed of only four knots. However, the designers of the UHAC intend the vehicle to reach water traversing speeds at least five times greater in future tests. If successful, the water speeds attained by the final iteration of UHAC will significantly surpass those showcased by the Assault Amphibious Vehicle, the current amphibious solution used by the U.S. Marine Corps. The UHAC was loaded with an internally transportable vehicle to then be launched at sea from USS Rushmore and accomplish its testing goals. The experimental vehicle then paddled to shore using the state-of-the-art floating crawler belts that allowed it to traverse over water and land indiscriminately. The amphibious tank successfully left the water a few minutes later and crawled onto the beach. Subsequently, the UHAC crew unloaded two metal ramps that the vehicle was carrying to use them to offload the internally transportable vehicle into the beach. Although modest in scale, this preliminary footage successfully demonstrates the enormous potential the UHAC has and how it might be used to solve the age-long problem of water-to-land connection in amphibious operations. Thank you for watching my video. How do you imagine D-Day would have unfolded if the Allies had a vehicle such as the Ultra Heavy Lift Amphibious Connector? Please share your thoughts in the comments section below. And don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell so you don't miss any of our upcoming exciting history-inspired content.